We are all one decision away from changing our lives forever, and a lot of us don't even know it. And the difference between the decisions you make today and the ones that you made last year, if they've gotten you to where you are right now, they were not good decisions. And so if we want to have more power in our lives, we have to first understand what power is, and second, how to unlock it through the actions and decisions that we make. And if you have a company or a business or a job where you need to influence other people, or you need to get people to say yes, or you need people to make decisions, or most importantly, make decisions for yourself that are going to change your life for the better, then we have to understand what the topic means. If you don't know who I am, my name is Alshon Mosey, I own acquisition.com. And 10 years ago, I was sleeping on a gym floor and 10 years later, I am now in my mom's basement. That is how much better my life, kidding. Uh, this is actually a penthouse and I like to work in a closet because I like having the quiet and not having distractions. But uh, my life has gotten significantly better. Uh, and I recently spoke at Coaching Con uh, and they wanted me to talk about this specific topic because there was a series of events and decisions that made massive differences in my life and I broke them down. And after I gave the speech and got off stage, I had hundreds of people who messaged me saying that that uh, speech was one of the things that made them take huge strides in their life and honestly made them more powerful. And that is all I want for you, Mosey Nation, uh, is to become more and more powerful so that we can all make the world a better place. All right, so enjoy the presentation and I'll see you guys on the other side. It's just great to be here. So thank you guys so much. I promise that I will do my absolute best to give you a high return on your attention uh, because it's the most valuable thing you guys have. So I just want to thank you for investing it here with me today. So that being said, uh, the reason I went up with gold diggers, because we all know who's the real person who makes the money in the family. Um, <laughs> and so I, I picked right. That's, by the way, the best passive income strategy in existence is just to marry someone rich. Um, they don't talk about that one, right? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the second thing, though, that I want to talk about is, uh, is power. And I think that, actually, before I get into that, who here wants to be powerful? Awesome. And that's not everybody who raised their hand, which is interesting. And I think, I find it interesting because I ask that question sometimes, and in an audience, sometimes it's easier to remain anonymous. But one-on-one, -on -one, when you stare at someone's eyes, you're like, do you want to be powerful? A lot of people shrink away from that. And I think it's because, at least me, when I was coming up, I had negative associations with the word. To me, power was like the emperor in uh, Star Wars. You know, the lightning, bold fingers, anybody? Yeah. And so to me, that was like power, but I saw it as a negative thing. And I feel like as I developed, I started to learn that power is neutral. You can be incredibly powerful and bad, be incredibly powerful and good. And so the idea is if we can harness power, then it amplifies who we are. And if we're shitty people, then we're very, very shitty people. And if we're very good, we're very, very good. And so I hope that all of us aspire to have more power in our lives. And that is the underlying theme of the presentation I'm gonna to talk to you guys about today. So decision-making. Who's so excited about decision-making? Well, I'll give you the subheadline, which is selling with logic to make lots of money. And I think there are different selling styles. When I, because I've trained a lot of sales teams, we built a lot of sales teams, sold in a lot of different industries now. People sell differently. Who here would consider themselves like an emotional seller? Like you get like emotionally invested in the prospect, you get them to cry, anybody like that? You know what I'm saying? Cool. Who here is somebody who is, uh, is more of a like, I'm not gonna let you leave. <laughs> Types of, you know who you are, just raise your hand. I am that way too sometimes. All right, just me, fair enough. Um, and then the third is kind of logical selling, which is like, let's just talk through this, and if it makes sense, let's do it, and if it doesn't, no worries. Between those three types, I, I tend to actually be more of a logical seller in general. And I've gotten a lot of acclaim, rightfully or not, that was wild, um, <laughs> sorry. I actually have a fear of birds. Um, so this was about to be a very short presentation. Uh, and, so, and so a lot of, the, a lot of my like, success using logic and sales has given me a lot of acclaim. And this is the first presentation that I've put together. So this is just for you guys as a brand new presentation because I've been thinking about like, reverse engineering. What are the things, what are the frameworks we think about to get to yes, right? And the yes that I want from somebody is not a yes I'm gonna buy, but yes I'm going to decide. And I think if you can delineate that for yourself too, it takes a little bit of the pressure off selling. Because my goal is to give this person power. And you have to understand what power is in order to give it, right? Who here knows the definition of power? Go for it. I love that, I, thought to existence is what he said. Um, which is actually a really favorite way. So the dictionary definition 
is the ability to influence or direct events or people. That's the dictionary definition. But I love how you said it because as I see omnipotence, so God or a God figure, would be as they think it appears. So the, the distance between thoughts and reality, are in, there's, there is no distance, right? That would be an omnipotent being. If he thinks the world, the world exists, right? And so as we take steps towards that as the ideal, we become more powerful. And if we can do that for our prospects, we can allow them to step into the person they want to be and make a decision to own their shit one way or another. Does that make sense? Cool, all right, so let's rock. So this will either be the best presentation on sales you've ever heard, the worst presentation on sales you've ever heard, or somewhere in between. That is a promise, all right? <laughs> And so I thought it would make sense to start with this. We have a high, this is Charlie Munger, who's probably like my number one hero in this season of my life. Um, we have a high moral responsibility to be rational. And I think that getting someone to rationally decide is important because emotional buyers oftentimes get excited, they'll buy, and then who's had somebody who calls them two days later is like, I don't know why. Anybody? Raise your hand, just so you know you're not alone. Okay, and what happens is, it's just like dating, I think Layla talked about it yesterday, if you have a rational foundation for a relationship or a decision, when the emotions fade, the logic will continue. And so it's good to, to answer both sides of the decision-making process. The short-term side is the emotion that gets you to decrease your action threshold and take a step, right? But the logic is what makes it stick and actually makes a great customer, all right? And so for me, and I think that the further along you get in business and the, more, and the higher up you get in business, the more you'll see people who tend to make more logical decisions, more logic first decisions, and fewer and fewer emotional decisions, all right? So, what does being a rational, uh, sorry, what does rational logical have to do with selling? Well, you have logical buyers and you have emotional buyers in general, right? Most people sit on this continuum, one way or the other. And emotionally, people want to believe you. People want to buy. You must help their logical brains justify the decision that they already want to make. Think about it that way. They want to buy from you. You have to help them, all right? So who here identifies, actually, I'll skip through this. Emotional, logical, you're probably in between. Anybody in between these two? Anyone? All right, then you'll love this. <laughs> so before we get started, I thought, I would give you a few beliefs about selling that have served me very well throughout the years. Number one, people want to believe you, they want to buy, you must help their logical brains justify the decision. Two, selling happens before you ask for the sale. Closing happens after. So you're selling for a lot longer period of time, but the moment you kind of like take your pants off and you're like, this is what it is, that's when you're closing, <laughs> right? You have now solicited. <laughs> Now you close. <laughs> Three, it's easier to handle obstacles than objections. I'll get to what the difference between those are in a second. That being said, expect and plan for no. It is not failure, it is expected. So stop being surprised. It's one of the first things we talk new sales guys into is expect no. That's not like, that's a part of this. If they already were going to say yes, then you are not necessary. No is the job, right? If they could make the decision on their own, they would just send you the money, right? The reason they're struggling is because they can't and they need your help, which is why sales is actually the first step in coaching. And I see sales as power. If you can have the ability to direct or influence others, that is power. And I feel like it should be made much cooler then I feel like it is. Five, if you didn't get a gasp from the price tag, you didn't go high enough. This is another belief. So for those of you who are afraid to raise your price, if you're not getting gasps, you're not going high enough. Straight up. And when you do it that way, you can always walk down and have a beautiful price anchor. Right, when you say $100,000 first, a grand feels like a rounding error. It's true, but when I say $10 first, like I'm saying it right now, $10, then I say 1,000, Sounds way fucking bigger, doesn't it? So you gotta get the gasp, and you gotta train your guys, if you have a team, they have to be comfortable with the no, and they have to be comfortable with the gasp. They gotta go for the gasp, and be like, dude, you should have heard the gasp on this one, right? <laughs> there we go, seven. Selling properly is the first step becoming a coach, right? Your first impressions and the expectations you set dictate the relationship. How you sell, the fact that you use logic in the sale, will set you up for success and your client for success in the long run. Eight, selling is helping prospects make decisions to help themselves. 
Like you are helping them help themselves. That's where the power comes from. You are not helping them. You're helping them help them. See the difference? It's nuanced, but it's real. Nine, keep the prospect, not the sale, as the priority. It's not about us. The more you can vanish in the sale and, and magnify them, the better your selling conversations will go because it's not about us. They don't care about you. They only care about them. And they will talk about themselves as long as you'll let them. This is a really important one, especially when you start to getting into closing. Seek to understand, not to argue. And the way that I train our sales teams around this is childlike curiosity. So when someone says, when someone objects to something, it's like, huh, that's so weird. I wouldn't have thought that. Tell me more about that, right? And you get to be able to maintain that childlike curiosity the same way they train fighters to not breathe too much during a fight, through exposure. The more, you more times you get into these uncomfortable, high stakes, closing scenarios, the less weird and high stakes they become because they become what you do every day. And the good thing is, you get to have this conversation hundreds and thousands of times, and they only get to have it once. So you fucking better be better at it than them. Closing is a dance, not a fight. It's seduction, not rape. <laughs> I mean, I'm being super serious about this. The goal is not to beat them into submission. The goal is to sell from your back foot. It's like, I'm good. I want to help you help you. And if that means not doing this, then I fucking love it. I'm with you. I'm on your team. And I'll give you a bullet around that in a second. Selling is a transference of belief over a bridge of trust. Therefore, there are two things that are required. You must believe so that you can transfer it, and you must have trust to make the transfer. Because if you truly believe it, and a lot of times, you, st anyone been on a hot streak when they're selling? Anyone? Anyone who just had their hand up ever been on a cold streak? <laughs> Most times, you go from hot to cold not because you forgot how to sell, but because you stop believing in why you're selling. You have the same skills as you did the day before. But sometimes, you get a text, you get an email, you get a pain in the ass customer, you ask for a refund, whatever the hell it is, right? And then you question yourself. And so that bridge might have been created, but there was nothing to walk across it, because your cup wasn't full. And so that's why, especially it's you in the beginning, but your teams over time, the process of filling conviction is one of the easiest and best ways to increase someone's closing percentage. Better than any of the training in the world. If you get someone to believe, they will sell the right way because they're doing it not to make the deal because they want to help the other person. 16, you can only build trust if you genuinely want to help. And humans are exceptionally good at sniffing out intention. It is a survival mechanism. You have to know if someone's trying to double cross you. We're very good at smelling it out. And the reason a lot of you guys can't close is because you only care about closing. Belief and trust are a continuum, not binaries. So it's not you believe or don't believe, it's not they trust you or don't trust you, but how much do they trust you? How much do you believe? How deeply do you believe? Because if anyone ever been around somebody who just believes balls to bones, something that you think's batshit crazy? And like, I mean, all the way. So much so that you start to question what you believe. That's what real conviction does. 18, closers ask hard questions and it's because you genuinely care. That's why you do it. That's why we're here. Who here wants to impact thousands of lives and help people? Then you gotta fucking ask hard questions because it's the only thing that's gonna actually pierce someone's heart and actually get the transformation to happen. If you, can't make, if you cannot have transformational conversations, you cannot coach. And this is the first step. The person who cares the most about the prospect wins the sale. That includes them. So if you care more about their well-being than they do, you will win. And if you are more convicted, they will question their own excuses because you are so certain. Little tip, little nugget for you. Record all your sales, <laughs> by the way. Because when you do get on that hot streak, right? When you get on that hot streak and then you get cold again, watch your hot streak. See where you paused, what jokes you made, when you asked for the sale, when you didn't, how you overcame it. And it'll get you back in the flow much faster than trying to question yourself, what do I do, what do I do? Always record all your sales. It's also the easiest way to train new people. And then lastly, 21. Power is the ability to direct or influence people. If you want to be powerful, you must understand this skill. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Cool? Awesome? When does selling happen? Does it happen when they're a lead? Does it happen when we're qualifying them? Does it happen when we solicit the sale? 
does it happen when we close the sale? When does the selling happen? All the time. The entire time selling is happening. But what are we going to talk about today? Just this. Just closing. Everything you have to do after asking someone to buy. Why are we doing that rather than the entire process? Beyond the fact that we'd be here all day, the other reason, and I love this, is that closing has one of the highest predictors of success in business. And here's an analogy for it. Everyone familiar with the NFL? Yeah. Great. So here's an insane statistic. The top five red zone offenses in the league now, last five years, made the playoffs 90% of the time. Here's why this is interesting and crazy. There's a million other stats. They could have horrible defenses. They could have terrible coaching. They could have a terrible, whatever it is, right? They could have all these things that are wrong with their, they could have terrible special teams, whatever. But just this one stat, if they're in the red zone, they fucking close. And I can tell you, if you have this ability, if you have the skill, it will make up for a tremendous amount of deficiencies in other areas of your life and business, and it will buy you time to learn those. But if you can't close, it's very difficult to grow in business, especially in the beginning, because it's probably you. That's why we're talking about closing. Why is this important from a money-getting perspective? Well, first off, if you have 100 people walk in the door, 10% are never going to buy. Just accept that, right? Problem is you don't know which 10% it is. <laughs> but 10% are never going to buy. 10% are always going to buy. You just got to not fuck it up. And most of you guys, these are the only sales you're getting. They're like, well, I already, I'm already here. My friend told me about you. I have my credit card out. And some of you are like, well, you know, let's make sure. You're like, just shut the fuck, just take the card. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shut up, right? That's like, hey, my friend's so awesome. You got to meet him. And she's like, oh, my God, he's great. And then the guy starts talking, and she's like, oh, just kidding. You know, like, just fucking, like terrible, right? But this is what we fight for. This is what we train. And if you want to make a big impact, that's what we're fighting for. It's the middle 80. Why this presentation will make you money. If after this presentation, you just have one more bullet, one more play in your arsenal to close, or I get you one more deal a month, I'll feel like my job was done, all right? And hopefully, if you just do that, it'll pay for your entire weekend, all right? That's my goal for the presentation, that everything that you guys have done for this whole weekend is paid for. Is that cool, fair outcome? All right. So this is one of my favorite sayings. You're only one decision away from changing your life forever. And whenever I feel overwhelmed, or I feel like I'm decreasing, like I feel powerless, or I feel like I have less power than I want to have, I always say this to myself because it's like, I can take one decision and change fucking everything. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can drink a bottle of Jack, get in the car, I can change everything with one decision, right? I can make a step to, to invest in something. I can buy something. I can invest in myself. I can, I can have a terrible conversation with Layla, or I can have an amazing conversation with Layla. But just one decision. And that's always given me power. But the thing is, is that instead of changing our lives, we blame, and when I say blame, I want you to think, give power to sources outside of our control. And this is what you, and this is what your prospects and your customers are doing. And this is why so many people are weak and powerless. And so we're gonna do a fun activity today, because I want you to be involved so you can learn it. And we're gonna do this so that one, you can help decisions to help yourself with whatever decisions you're facing. Two, you can use these frameworks to help prospects help themselves. And then three, become more powerful. So, but rather than keep this hypothetical, I need you to visualize the decision that you need to make. All right? Can you do that for me? Yeah. Fantastic. And this is why. I want you to actually think through a decision together, because this is a statement from Confucius. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. So my goal here isn't for you to take screenshots of every picture, or of every slide. That's not my point here, because the thing is, is when you do that, and you kind of, I mean, this is why I do it, I take pictures so that I don't have to remember it. But I don't want you to remember it. I want you to understand it. If you understand it, you won't have to go back to your notes, because let's be real, half the time you're not even gonna open these notes up again. You're here now with me. Try and understand. If you do that, it can change your life. Because what we're gonna do is not gonna be some scripts that you have to understand, but the logic behind the arguments that people will give you as to why they are not choosing to become more powerful. And if you can unlock that, you, people will feel more powerful talking to you, and they will want to buy from you because of the feeling they have. Does that make sense? And so that's when you're using logic to create an emotion. So here, here's an easy one for you. Anyone here presented with a decision last 24 hours? Yes? Great. Fantastic. So who thinks the, a decision could change your life for the better? Great. For the worse? Who knows? All right. Let's go. So here's my goal. 
I want to show you, as though you were a prospect, how to think through a decision and help others using these frameworks, right? What you want, what you don't want. Maximize the left, minimize the right. So here's what this is translated to. If you decide to buy the offer, you feel more certain about your decision. If you decided not to buy the offer, you feel fucking certain about the decision. And if you were undecided, you make a fucking decision, all right? And you feel good that it's the one that has the highest likelihood of getting you closer to where you want to go. And this is what we have to walk through with our prospects. When you're looking at them, you have to be like, I don't want you to buy. I want you to decide for you, not for me. I'll be the same either way, right? You're like, I'm going to be ripped and in shape. It's not going to change me, <laughs> right? Like, that's not going to change. But like, it will change for you, right? So quick note on sales ethics, and then we'll dive in. Helping someone make a decision to help themselves does not mean buying from you. That's a re reiteration. You have to keep their goals at the center of the decision, and you should be happy. And I mean this, because if you can shift this truly, if you can be happy when someone decides to own the power and not work with you, then the pressure around sales disappears. It evaporates. There's no stake. The stake is, did I help them? Does that make sense? And that means that you can win every sale because you change the metric you're measuring yourself by. That's the superpower. Like, and that's where you do make the most sales because you don't care about the sale because you care about the person. And the people pay the people who pay the most attention. So I call it paying attention. They pay for it. They pay for you to pay attention rather than talking about yourself, right? Because they don't care about you. Because they're thinking about 100 other things. And this is why. Most importantly, make high stakes decisions to help your prospects in order to best serve them. OK. So I told you earlier I was going to talk about the difference between obstacles and objections. A couple of you guys raised your hands about the differences. I'm not going to ask. I'll tell you what it is. Obstacle is a thing that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders progress. When you disagree with them, that is an obstacle. This happens before you solicit the sale. Someone says some bullshit before you even get to the sale, that's an obstacle. A simple example I hear all the time. Hey, why'd you hop on the call today? Hey, why'd you walk in the gym today? Whatever it is, right? Them. I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the program. First 10 seconds, <laughs> obstacle. You're not here to find out more about the program. You're here because you're fat. But they got to say it. So you're like, oh, so you're finding out, like, do you do this all the time? Do you go to lots of different programs to find out information? Or is there a problem you're trying to solve? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. Like, oh, got it. So you're not just hopping on 100 calls a day, because I was like, that would be a very weird existence, right? You just hop on for information all day. Ha, 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 ha. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this conversation before, right? <laughs> so it's an obstacle, right? And the thing is, it's easy to confront and destroy obstacles before you ask for the sale. Once you've asked for the sale, you switch to objections. Objections is when they disagree with you. So it's much easier to be on the other side, disagreeing and helping them break their beliefs before the stake has been presented. After, after, the, after you're in the red zone, it's all closing. It's all objection overcomes, right? Example of that is like, I don't want to buy right now. And you're like, totally understand. What are the main criteria you're thinking through? Which is always funny, because people are like, I need to think about it. I've never had someone like leave because they need to think about it. I'm like, cool, what are you thinking about? And they're like, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> right? like, so learning how to talk through these high stakes decisions with yourself or others is the purpose of the presentation. And as a result, you'll become more powerful. OK, so before I dive into these arch, each of these arguments, I have to make this one statement is that the person must really want the goal and believe three things. One, which we'll get to it. There we go. The product will get them the goal, comma, the way they want to get there. And I learned that second half the hard way because we found out in gym launch that people would say no sometimes to buying memberships, right? Or buying challenges or whatever. But when we offered them the ability to come back the next day, help them for free, we'd sell them $400 of supplements. And they just said no to a $100 down service thing. I'm like, what the fuck? It's because they want to lose weight, but they want to lose weight their way. And so that's when I started learning like, oh, not only do we have to make sure that they want the goal, and they believe that the product's going to get them there, it has to get them there the way they want to get there. This gives you ammo for the questions that you're going to ask. Does this make sense? OK. The second thing is that you and others will support them. Like, are you telling me the truth? Is this really what's going to happen? Will other people around me support this decision? And the third is that it will work for them and not just everyone else. Sure, I've seen the people who step on the stage, but they're different than me. I'm a snowflake. I have metabolic thyroid ketosis, right? <laughs> whatever. I have zero influence allerger, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I have no following-itis, 
right? Whatever it is, right? Whatever bullshit you tell yourself. And what you have to do in this situation is you have to provide proof so that it would be more unreasonable not to believe than to believe. And this is a logical close. This is, not a, this is not an emotional close. This is when you look at someone and say, how many people would you need to see for it to be more unreasonable for you not to believe than to believe? At what point? Is it 10? Is it 50? Well, here's 1,000. Tell me when to stop. OK, OK, OK. Great. So that's not the real reason. And then you can confront the real shit. All right. So otherwise, if they're not sure of those things, if they don't actually want to lose weight, if you don't actually want to make money doing online fitness, then it doesn't matter what Jason says. If you don't want to make money doing online fitness, then you're not going to buy, right? If you do want to make money doing online fitness, then you go down, you go down the, tra the train tracks. That makes sense? OK. Again, this is why you expect no at first, because if people could make the decision, they would have already made it. All right, now to the main course. Richard Feynman, besides Charlie, one of my favorite thinkers of all time, he was like the second guy on uh, the atom bomb. Sounds negative. Brilliant teacher, he's known for this. Understand, don't memorize. Learn principles, not formulas. And that's what the rest of this presentation is about, is the principles behind overcoming these distortions that people have. And so this is me asking you for your own sake. Don't take pictures of the slides. It's because all the stuff's going to be in the recordings. But you are here now, so be here now, so you can understand it, OK? So there are three sources. This is a huge breakthrough for me. So I'm going to share it with you the first time I've shared a life. There are three sources that we cast our power to, OK? And it took me a very long time to get through this because I looked at Grant, and he had his, you know, you got stall, decision maker, money. And then you talk to Barry, who owns Sage. She's like, you got time, fit, uh, money, fear, shame, right? Those are hers. And then Jordan Belfort's got his. And the, so everybody's got, like, these are the only overcomes, right? And I was like, there has to be an actual truth here. Like, there has to be something that's true that's unquestioned. And so trying to figure this out, I actually went back to Dr. Albert Ellis. Anybody who knew who he is? No one. Great. Um, who here knows what cognitive behavioral therapy is? CBT? He invented it. Smart dude. And so what he noticed is that he originally had 11 distortions of reality, then he dropped it to nine, then to seven, and then he came to three. And the three stuck. And the three are what I'm about to share with you. And you're like, why is he talking about this about sales? Because the objections that people offer you where they cast their power to are distortions of reality. They are the things we use to upset ourselves. These are the three. Circumstances, and this is the irrational statement that people make. I must get what I want when I want it. I must not get what I don't want. If I don't get what I want, I can't stand it. That's when people blame their emotional disturbances on emotional disturbances on circumstances. Two, others. Other people must treat me fairly and kindly, and if, I, if they don't, they are no good and deserve to be condemned and punished. It's like your animal brain, right? Three, self. I must do well or else I am no good. These are the three core distortions that upset people. This is like mental illness, right? And so I'm not saying anyone has mental illness if they don't agree with you. It's more so that these are distortions that are not real. And if you can understand, not memorize, if you can understand this, then you can have these high stakes conversations understanding exactly which distortion they're suffering from. And I'll show you how to overcome them, okay? And so I like to consider like the onion of blame. People, start, this is like one of the bigger breakthroughs I had. They start with the outside. They blame circumstances, time, money, other shit. And then the step next to that, they start to blame other people, my spouse, my kids, my employees. And then finally they say like, it's me, it's my fault. And so you might have to overcome multiple layers as you peel back. And based on the objection they give you, you can know where you're at. You can know how close you are. If someone just says, I have to think about it, then you're like, great. I'm talking to the person who's in power and the decision maker, and I just need to get them to say yes. If they're like, I don't have, they're casting the power away. And some of you guys are probably casting your power away on decisions you need to make, which is why I'm making this presentation. Even though that these are the things that distort people's realities, because you're like, no one's ever said, circumstances are getting in my way, right? Like, no one says that. <laughs> they manifest in five ways that I want to equip you to deal with, all right? For yourself and others. So these are the five most common excuses, scapegoats, that people use. For and if you find other ones, these are the biggest buckets, because I didn't want to have 100 things here. But the big three buckets are circumstances, others, and self, right? But they manifest with time in multiple ways, and I'll show you how. Value, price, money, et cetera. Fit, I'm a special snowflake. Others, which is I don't have the authority to make the decision. And then finally self, which is 
What if I just don't make the decision? Let, some, let life make it for me, right? Avoidance, stall. You go from surface level to core. And as a side note, you should never get stuck on the stuff near the top. And ideally, you should really never get stuck anywhere on this equation if the person wants what you have and you truly believe in what you have to help them. And I mean that. Like, if you understand this thoroughly, you can walk someone towards helping themselves. Okay, this is what they look like, or this is what they sound like in reality. Not a good, not a good time right now. I'm really busy, right? That's time. Can't afford it. Too expensive. Fit. Not sure if it's for me. I hate broccoli. I can't do a plan with broccoli, right? Can't do a plan where I have to DM people every day. It's against my brand. I'm poor, but it's against my brand, right? <laughs> Authority. Have to talk to my partner, spouse. I have to talk to somebody who has more power than me. It's funny, because when you start thinking this way, it sounds silly. And then avoidance. I need to think about it. Well, clearly. Let's think about it now, all right? And so I told you, I want you to think about the principles behind these things, not memorize. You've got circumstances, you've got other people, and you have yourself. And we drill down. So, quick test. Who here is physically in the room? Raise your hand. Wonderful. Arms are working. We're rocking. So, here's my ask. Raise your hand if you or your prospects present with this distortion. So, who here is a time person? I'm busy. It's not a good time. Maybe in the future. Anyone deal with these? Sometimes it's yourself. Totally. So, I'm also going to tell you a secret about this. I think the reason I got pretty decent at logical arguments is because I am inherently skeptical and I will paralyze myself from not doing anything unless I have really sound reasons to do it. And I realized that I couldn't move forward and make any progress in my life until I had these frameworks to think through these hard decisions through so I could start taking steps to where, where I wanted to go. It took me years to get there. And so hopefully I can give you some keys that help me unlock my own head to get out of my own fucking way so that you can too and help your clients, all right? So the way I think about time, and there's a lot of overcomes for all of these things. What I tried to do was bunch the three biggest ones that I like to use most frequently. And if I uh, veer from like the, the bullets on the screen, it's because I'm riffing with you and I'd rather just kind of stay in the flow. Is that cool? Okay, fantastic. So when you're overcoming this one, each of these is kind of a specific angle that you're attacking it from. So a macro is like, um, this is a busy season for me. I've got lots of stuff going on, right? Micro is like, I don't have any time in my day. So you're one person saying, I've got lots of shit going on. One person's like, I can't find the time. It's different. Sounds subtle, but it's both about time, but in different ways. All right? And then the, f the last one is, well, wh when, when I have time, I'll start. Right? Which everyone knows is fucking horseshit, but whatever. Okay. So, as always, we never disagree with prospects because you're not in a fight. Totally get it. Totally understand. Do you think, like, do you want this to be something that lasts for the long term? Right? It's a question. You're like, yeah. Do you think that you're gonna be busy again in the future? Well, yeah. So you want this to last in the long run, and you do think you're gonna be busy again in the future. Well then, don't you think it'd be best to start now when you are busy? Because if you learn how to do it when you're busy, you'll be able to do it forever. If you can only learn it during a perfect circumstance, then you're gonna fall off when it gets busy again. And isn't that the time you'd wanna have the most support? It goes for you guys too. Well, that's just number one. We got so many more, <laughs> right? And so, when you knock that out, the goal is that the person says, well, fuck, that's not a good reason, and you take one step towards the truth. So when you're thinking about it, it's not like, oh, I've got to overcome this one thing and then they'll buy. You've got to keep peeling. And if you have this framework, you understand the direction you're going in. And you can start listening for the, oh, they're talking about themselves now. I've gotten two layers deeper, right? So that's seasonal. Micro. You can't tell someone in a sale, hey, take out your phone, take out your hours by week, pull it up, oh look, 22 hours on social media this week. You've got time. So you say it differently. You say, you know what, I had the same issue, and I used to complain all the time about like, how I didn't have time to, to be successful and do the things I needed to do, and my wife got so sick and tired of me saying this, she pulled my phone out and she was like, look, I guess I just found your time, didn't I? And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And you can say it that way, and then a prospect feels better. So anybody here feel like they don't have time, right? And the first thing that any program's gonna do, if it's a good program, is going to cut out the 90% of the shit that you are doing, which is causing you to feel overwhelmed, which is probably the real reason you feel like you don't have time. Jeff Bezos got the same time you do, right? It's just, what are the things that you're doing that he's not? It's not about adding shit to your plate. It's about removing the stuff that's not working. Because clearly, everything that you're doing that's filling your time is not making you more money. So you're doing the wrong shit. So there's going to be plenty of time. Because all the stuff you're doing now is not working, <laughs> right? Sounds simple. But that's the reason, right? 
So we want macro grow. When then? Hey, in the future, when I've got time, I'll totally sign up for your program, right? Anyone heard this one? Anyone say this one? <laughs> right? And again, you want to you wanna empathize. You don't say like, oh, that's bullshit. You say, totally understand. That's, I was stuck like this for years. If you can step in their shoes, you're not attacking them. You actually go from the inside out. You step into their self, and then you walk them through the epiphany that you experienced. And it doesn't feel judgmental. It feels helpful. Does that make sense? I used to feel the same way, right? And I found this out actually from Jason Fladley, and he was the one who told me this. It was, it's, a, it's a logical fallacy. It's called the when-then fallacy, which is why it's how I remember it. And the one then fallacy simply states, when I have X, then I will do Y, but it flips sequence. So it's like, when I get better, I will go to the hospital. <laughs> Sorry, there's just so many like hilarious ones about like money and stuff like, I will start saving money once I'm rich. I'm like, all right, but the thing is, is that we do this, right? We do this. I'll pay for the program that'll make me more money when I have more money. That's the point of the program. I'll pay for the program that'll help me get a six pack once I have a six pack. Once I have more time, which the program's gonna help me have, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it doesn't make, it's a fallacy. And so what that means is it's a distortion. It's not real. And so the goal of having these high stakes conversations is simply showing people, we're not attacking, we're just walking them through it and being like, do you realize that this is holding you back? And I know this better than anyone because I'm a skeptical motherfucker. The reason I can do all these logical things is because I'm the first person I'd overcome. Right? And you might be too. So, once we attack time from these three angles, it depends which one they present with. If they present with one and then move to the next, you can knock all three out. You'll probably find some that, that make the most sense to you. But the thing here is, it's not about memorization. You just gotta get it. Macro, you're always gonna be busy. Won't you want the most help when you are busy so they can stick forever? Yes, time. My wife showed me my phone. Turns out I got fucking time. But the reality is, it's not about what I am doing, it's about the stuff I gotta stop doing. And that's what I help you with, right? This isn't scripting, this is just understanding it, right? And then when then? It's a fallacy, it's a distortion, it's not real. And then just use two crazy examples, like once I have money, then or I'll save money when I'm rich, right? It's just like ridiculous. Okay, so what did we do? One reason down, and we're getting closer to the core, right? Right, so who here is somebody who's like, I can't afford it, it's too expensive, or has heard this from a prospect? I was like, I better see everybody's hands. <laughs> Especially if you're selling high ticket, which hopefully you get a gasp. So these are the four frameworks that I think through. There's a million like money closes, but these are the ones that I like the most and that, that, that to me resonate the best, right? And so why a lot is good is kind of like my, my, my first one here. And so the reason that if someone gasps or think that this is a lot of money, you just ask them, is this a lot of money to you? And they're gonna say, yeah. If they say no, then you're like, awesome, buy it. And if they say yes, right? And if they say yes, then you're like, that's the exact reason why you're gonna be successful. Because there's other people who buy this thing and you know what, they're not all in on it. But the question is, do you wanna draw the line in the sand and go all in? Do you wanna step over the line and be the person you wanna be? Because I can tell you that this is not about whether this works or not, I've already proven that. The question is whether you work or not. And so if you put more on the line, then you have a higher likelihood of being successful. So you should be the last person to be worried about this. I'm more excited because the best stories are always coming from people like you in your exact situation. So don't let that be a reason not to do it. That should be the reason to do it. So the next one is like, why is this not a lot? So first is, the fact that it's a lot for you is good. It means you're gonna try hard. The second one is like, well, it's a lot in terms of absolute amount, but relative amount, it's very little, right? Because if all this does is add $10,000 a month to your income, is it worth it? If all this does is get you into a bikini, is it worth it? Yeah. And so then what happens, and the reason that this is a stepping process, right, is that we're, we're just taking these objections out of the way so we can get the person to confront reality, not a distortion they've created, because the reality is the thing they're afraid of. And so what happens is when they say, yeah, if it did that, it would be worth it, right? The problem is they don't believe you, right? And so it's like, great, then it's not about the price. It's about whether you believe me. So you can sidestep it. Does that make sense? We're taking a step closer. And then obviously you can use a comparison, you know, depending on what you're selling. If you can price anchor with like, well, here, they don't have a four year degree for doing online fitness. That's why the alternative education industry exists. And it's because the formal education has failed most of us, right? Anybody graduated here with a four year degree? 
Anyone immediately be able to use that 40 degree to get leads, make sales? <laughs> no, me neither, <laughs> right? And what's crazy is that some of these degrees are 50, 100, $200,000 and take four years when you've got something that can help you make, make that entire amount of money in half the time, right? For a tenth of the price. When you think about it like that, frame, it's actually a great deal. Does that make sense? So you just frame it. You have to give context, all right? So number one is the fact that it's a lot for you is good. It means you're actually gonna try. Number two is if it does what we say it's, it's gonna do, the value's there. So that's not actually what you're opposed to, which then we can take the next step, all right? Number three is what's money good for anyways? This is actually one of my favorite lines of reasoning for a variety of reasons, and I'll get to it. When you're looking at a prospect, or you're looking at yourself, you're gonna spend this money either way over the next 12 months. You're gonna spend it, right? And in fact, not only are you gonna spend it, you're going to buy the program. The question is whether you're gonna pay for it in money or pay for it in time. And so like, you can learn every single lesson that's in this program, whether it's losing weight, you know, uh, getting leads, selling online, whatever it is, right? You're gonna learn these lessons. But do you want it to take 12 weeks or 12 years? And the question is, are you gonna be able to live a thousand lifetimes because of the thousand people that we've helped just like you? and gathered all those lessons and put them together so you don't have to do the trial and error for that entire period of time. So the question is not whether you're gonna buy it or not, it's just how do you wanna pay? And so for me, this is a personal note, and I'll, I'll probably say it at the end, but like, the reason we've been able to move quickly through life is that I will buy other people's mistakes. Because it's just, it's the only way you can buy time in this life, is to buy the knowledge to take less time from other people who have taken their time. And like, if you think about human civilization in general, Edison took however long to make a light bulb, and then we just bought the lesson from him, and now we have light bulbs, right? And the next guy figures out the next thing, and then we just buy the lesson from him. And that's how we have to move faster. So, you're gonna spend the money either way. The question is 12 months from now, is it gonna be on shit that didn't get you anywhere, or stuff that is going to get you somewhere? And no matter what, you're buying, you're, you're buying the program, you're just gonna pay time, or you're gonna pay with money. And if we're being real, you've probably been paying for time the last six years. How's that working for you? Do you wanna do more of that? This is also, this is, a, this is a classic one, it's a very easy one to remember, but like, who here knows the difference between a self-made billionaire when they had nothing and where you're at right now if you have nothing? Zero. They both, you're both broke. They were broke, you're broke, whatever it is, if that's where you're at right now. The only difference is that that proves that if they were successful, it wasn't about the resources they had, it was about how resourceful they were. So I'll tell you a quick story about this. So anyone here read uh, Shoe Dog? Right, the story of Nike. So in the story, he talks about how he was about to lose everything multiple times. It's a crazy story. And this time it was like, it was, it was gonna go down. Like it wasn't gonna happen. And he needed a tremendous amount of money and he just didn't have it. He'd extended all his credit lines. The banks wouldn't do it. And the next lenders that they, they canceled on him and the, the company was gonna fold because it was growing too fast. At that point, he could have just given up and said, there's nothing I can do. I maxed out all my cards, I maxed out all my banks, there's literally nothing I can do. And his people had already worked for free. <laughs> they were like, we can't do this anymore. He went to his vendors and said, you need to pay my payroll for me. He went to his vendors. Anybody use like landing page software? Anyone? Or, uh, anyone use something from a vendor? Right. It's like going to that guy, like going to your videographer and be like, listen, you gotta pay payroll for me this, uh, this month, because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to keep doing business with you, because I'll be out of business. Resourceful, not resources. And the reason this is so important is because when you have nothing, it's the easiest excuse to give yourself. Because you're like, well, I have nothing, that's why I can't. It's like, of course, but every self-made millionaire and every self-made billionaire was self-made. And they started with nothing, which puts them in the exact same seat you are. So the question is, do you wanna have power, or do you wanna not have power? When you have power, you're resourceful, not resources. Right? And so if we wanna make these decisions that are going to help ourselves, we need to step into that. And so when you're talking to your prospects, it's the same thing, right? Does that make sense? Okay, rocking. I mean, and you can drill deeper into this, is like, do you think there's anyone else who's been in your situation who's achieved this, or maybe worse than your situation? The answer is yes, and if they can, why can't you, right? So, we're taking steps closer. Is it, are you guys digging this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, thanks. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was rapt attention or sheer boredom. So, we're not, you feel, you, you feel what progress we're making? Like, the person presents and says, I don't have time, this shit's busy, blah, 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 and you're like, nope, 
No, nope, we're going to take one step closer. And they're like, you know what? But I, I don't have the money or it's too expensive. You're like, well, if you don't have the money, you're going to be successful. It's worth it, right? Yes, I understand why it's worth it. Well, you don't need money to begin with, right? You got to be resourceful and you can find the money. Because I'll ask you, this is a fun one for business owners. Who here has had an unexpected bill ever come up? Taxes, <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. And then all, okay, so everyone here is still alive? Who raised their hands? Who here was able to magically pull money out of their ass and figure out a way to do it? Raise your hand. Here's what's crazy. You have the ability to be resourceful when it's for someone else and not for you. And it's because you choose to be powerful when someone else needs it, but not for yourself. Amen. Fucked up, right? So stop doing that. If you function like you have to make payroll tomorrow and like you, you're back on rent and you're going to get kicked out, you think differently. And if instead of paying your landlord, you're paying you because that's what you want to do, it shifts internally. Because everyone here just proved the fact that you can be resourceful when you choose to be. So just choose to be. So number three is it's not, not sure it's a fit for me. So besides the obvious ones, which is like, I don't want to work out. Broccoli sucks. I, I can't do a program where, where I, I can't do cardio, whatever the fuck, right? Um, like I said, I don't want to do DMs. I don't want to post on Instagram. I don't want to have a Facebook group, whatever, right? Whatever the bullshit is, all right? I'm not sure if the vehicle is a fit for me. So usually you can overcome the easy ones, but if someone is just really sticking hard, these are the three that I use to, to shift perspective, okay? So this one is new identity, new priorities. So it's good to have cues for these things, which is like we vote with our dollars about the things that we care about. And if you show me what someone is spending their money and their time on, I can tell you what their future is. And I'll tell you an interesting story. So um, I had somebody who was just like you, who was like, you know what, I don't want to do this either. And I told her this story. Can I tell you it? Yes. And this is what you'd say to the prospect, right? So I was with Layla, and we went to Sephora, which is a makeup store. And, <laughs> and I show up like this. Uh, <laughs> I feel welcome. And so we're, we're standing there, she's doing something, and I usually stand in the corner like this. Um, and I saw these two little girls, it might have been like, I don't know girl age, so like 12 to 15, this, like this, this. And they were like giggly and so excited, and they had like the girl with the smock came over, was like helping her out, helping them out. And she was like, okay, this is like eyeliner, and this is lipstick, and this is whatever, blush. Um, I'm just like using words I've heard. Uh, <laughs> this is how you paint your face. And the thing is, is the girls were like so excited. And then they were like, right before they left, she was like, girls, she's like, you have to remember, like now that you're getting older and you're becoming a woman, you need to start budgeting for this stuff. All right, so you're gonna start buying this every month. All right, so like remember, you gotta save some money for this so you can have it. And the girls were so excited that they were like, yes, like we're becoming women now and these are the things that women do. It's because when you have new identity, you have new priorities. And so you've had priorities that are aligned with your old identity, right? There's the you that goes out, the you that drinks, the you that does the blah, 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 spends money on shit you shouldn't do, spends time on shit you shouldn't be spending time on, and there's the you that you want to be. And so right now, we can draw the line in the sand and be like, do you want to keep walking down the road that you have been walking? And if you don't, then you have to step into a new identity. And with that new identity comes new priorities. Because people who want to be rich spend money on themselves. They spend money on education. They invest in their skill sets. Because I want to align my identity with the identity of those who came before me who've done the things I want to do, right? And just like those little girls stepping into that identity, we too must step into the identity we want to be. Does that make sense? And so when you're talking to somebody who's trying to lose weight and they're like, I can't afford a gym membership, and you're like, girl, you're spending 200 bucks on your nails and you've got a $1,000 outfit on, do you think another $1,000 outfit would make you look better or your high school weight? Right? Do you think another thousand dollar outfit would make you look better or being rich as fuck? And I say that for those of you who are thinking about it on the money side, right? Like you waste money, I like, some of you guys have bigger shoe collections than like, it's like fitness, like fitness people and shoes. It's like the weird, like, and Lululemon and the, you know, spandex. It's like a hundred pieces of spandex. Anyways, so it's like your whole wardrobe could be consolidated into a skill that could buy you as many wardrobes as you want if you chose to, right? Okay, rocket. I don't like this certain aspect, 
This is one of my favorite, easiest ones to hit, which is like, you gotta change the change, right? What you have been doing has been getting what you've been getting. And you gotta change the change. Because like, I remember I would go through meal plans with people, and they'd be like, well, can we change this? Because this is what I eat for breakfast. Can we, do, can we make that the breakfast? And I'm like, that breakfast makes you look like you. <laughs> that way you spend your first four hours of the day makes your bank account look like what it does look like. Ooh. Right? <laughs> right? Taking steps. Right? We're getting closer to the truth. And so the thing is, is that it's going to hurt to change because change hurts. And you've heard this one probably from Tony Robbins, and if you haven't, the question is whether the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. And that's where you just ask someone. And this is in the help part. If someone's like, the pain of staying the same is not worse than this change. It's like, then girlfriend, like gain 50 more pounds and come back. You know what I mean? Like get there. You know what I mean? Hit rock bottom. This isn't it for you. I'm being real. Some people rock bottom is 12% body fat. Some people it's 500 pounds. But everyone's got one. You just gotta know where yours is. And all you really gotta do is just move what rock bottom is for you, which is kind of interesting, because you start making a change here, which is kind of interest, like, interesting as a thought. But are you in enough pain is the question you ask the person. So for those of you who are unwilling to make a change because it feels contrary to like, oh, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna seem salesy, I don't wanna, I don't wanna help people, <laughs> like whatever, right? Like, is your current situation more painful than the change that you will have to go through or experience to get to where you wanna go? And so the last one is hypothetical. I actually really love this. This is a great framework overall for overcoming lots of different obstacles um, or objections that present themselves. But the hypothetical, and there's lots of ways of phrasing this, which is like, you've probably heard the unicorn clothes. You've probably heard like, if this were perfect, would you do it? On a scale from one to 10, where would this program be? If 10 was amazing and one was terrible, where, you know, where is this? They say a number and you say, cool, what would make it a 10? Why isn't a one? Like, you guys heard this scripting before? So you guys are like, no, please talk slower. Um, <laughs> The reason I said we have to learn the principles behind it rather than memorizing the script is that it all is based on one thing, which is hypothetical, which is if this were perfect, would you do it? Because you get a hypothetical agreement. And they say yes, if it were perfect. The thing is, that if you're like, if this were perfect, would you do it? If someone says no, then you're like, girl, okay. <laughs> like, let's take five steps back. Does my breath smell? <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, is, they've actually told you a lot there. It's like, it has nothing to do with the stuff you're talking about. They don't trust you. And now we can talk about that, right? So it's a great question to frame, like, where are we? And so it's like, if this were perfect, would you do it? Sometimes they'll laugh. If you ever pour, they'll laugh, they'll say yes, right? And so then you get to flip it and say, then what's the difference between perfection and what we've got? And the thing is, is that people are very hard. They don't actually know how to generate making a program because <laughs> they're not going to, like, know all the things you can deliver on the spot, right? And so they're like, most of the time, they'll be like, I, I don't know. And you're like, right, well, because it sounds like it's nothing to do with the program. It's all about to do with you. So let's talk about that. Right, and then all of a sudden, boom, one step closer to the truth. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's why we do hypotheticals. So if it were perfect, what's missing? And then if you can, if, it's, if they do give you an answer and they're like, I just don't want to do broccoli, then you're like, I do green beans, would you do it? They're like, yeah. And you're like, great, green beans it is, sign here. Right, like, <laughs> some, you would be fucking amazed how many times shit like that happens. So it's like one crazy thing. It's like, well, if we didn't have that, would you do it? Like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Where were you 10 minutes ago, right? And that's how you do a hypothetical. OK, we're making, we're making progress. You still with me? Still digging? OK, cool. Authority, all right? This is one of my favorite. Fa and so this one, instead of having three, I really just have like one very good statement of reasoning that you should understand, OK? This is real shit. So this is more of a process than it is anything else. But the spouse or decision maker is not there, right? Now, note for you guys, a lot of you guys have had the opportunity to go talk to a spouse, but a lot of you guys don't have that in your business, right? Like, spouse ain't there, and they leave. They're not coming back, right? Or they are, but very small percentage. Don't wait for it. OK, so what we have to do is try and sidestep it by isolating the objection and casting aside the partner, because the partner's not there. So how could they object to anything? They don't even fucking know who you are, right? And so the idea is, and again, this is assuming if you have a really long-term thing, then you want the partner to be there, right? Like, ideally, that's what you have. But if you don't have the opportunity, then you got to go through the next step, all right? Which is, what do you think they wouldn't like? And then they will tell you, and then you just overcome the thing, which has nothing to do with the spouse, because spouse isn't there, right? Very easy sidestep. Does that make sense? This works really well. 
like, why wouldn't they? It's like, well, because they don't want me to fail. Ooh, they don't want you to fail. Let's talk about you. And so this is the process that I walk through. Do they approve of your current struggle? Are they happy that you're struggling? No. Okay. Then why would they not approve of something that's going to fix something they already don't approve of? Right? They're not happy with how you're currently doing. Why would they be against something that's already making them unhappy? Right? Right. Well, let me ask you this. And they pause. They're like, well, if the roles were reversed and your husband needed this to make what he wants, his dreams happen, or your wife needed this program to make her dreams happen, would you support her? Then why wouldn't you support you? Right? Right. And I think the real problem that we're dealing with here, and this is the kicker, this is for everybody, is that you're asking for permission instead of support. Because it is your life, not theirs. And what happens is, if you give that power to them, and then two years from now, you're still fat, you're still poor, whatever it is, who are you going to blame? Them. And so that's when you have a resentful marriage, because you didn't own your shit. And so I'm not saying you shouldn't like, explain the decision to them, but what, the way you explain it to them is what I just said, which is if I don't do this for me, I'm going to end up resenting you. And I don't want that. And instead of me bitching to you every day about how we don't have money or about how I don't like my body, I'm now doing this and I'm joining a group of support, of community of people just like me. And crazy enough, for some reason, doctors go to college, right? <laughs> right? That makes sense. They go to medical school. Lawyers go to law school. But where do entrepreneurs go? There's no entrepreneur school. No one teaches this stuff. But it turns out there are people who teach it just for this specific industry. And I can take failures of 1,000 people and pack it into a year. And it's one-tenth the price of a four-year degree. Right? And so instead of whining to you, what I commit to is I'm going to show up and be a better husband, a better wife, a better partner. I'm not going to bitch to you about this stuff because I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to go all in. And I'm not asking you permission. I'm just asking for your support. All right? That's how you can overcome it. Because I'm going to be real with you. It is about them. And you have to believe that. Like, you can't say this unless you believe it. Because, like, you will, you save marriages by showing people that they are the ones in control. Because if they keep saying, my husband's not going to let me buy a weight loss program, what do you think she's secretly saying? I can't believe he won't let me do it. Right? If that's real. If she's using it as a foil, you sidestep it, you get to sell. Right? But that might be the real thing. And if that is the thing, then you have to let them step into that. And that's where, you know, having, that's where, like, having a three-day no-sweat guarantee or something like that is also helpful. It's like, hey, sign up. And I use, I use a lot of rapport and humor in my selling. And so I'd be like, hey, Cindy, if you sign up and you tell your husband and he's upset, you have, and, and when, when he sees you, he's like, girl, I don't want you to get in shape. I want you to stay overweight. I want you to put those sweatpants on. I want you to sit on that couch, reach your hand a bag of Cheetos, put the, the Cheetos fingers on there. <laughs> I want you to create generational unhealth. I want you to live 10 years less long. I want you to see our grandkids. I don't want that, right? I want to marry a younger, better you sooner because you're going to have a heart attack. If he says that to you, you have him call me, and then they're like cracking up, and you're like, okay, okay. Listen, sign up, three day no sweat. Like, if he, if he does tell you that he just wants you to be out of shape and never leave him because, uh, because he doesn't want you to get too hot because he's insecure, if he says that, uh, yeah, just let me know, all right? So like the whole time you're just joking and stuff, but the three day guarantee helps like nudge a lot of these people over. Is that cool? You guys get that one? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And so that goes for you, right? Like it's, it's about support, not permission. That's the bottom line, right? Support, not permission. Because otherwise you're gonna blame them for your lack of dreams being realized rather than blaming the person it should, which is you. All right, so this is avoidance. Now we're getting to the core. We've gotten rid of time. We know that you've got time, and the best time to do it is today, because you're going to be busy forever, right? Value, we know that you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, you'll buy it. If you can't afford it, it's a great reason to do it. And if the value is there, then there's no reason not to do it, because it'll pay for itself, right? And what's money good for anyways? You're going to pay for the program regardless. You want to pay in less time or more time. Value is not a problem. Fit, you've got to step into your new identity, right? You've got to be willing to change. And the question is just whether the pain that you're experiencing is less than the pain of the change that it takes to experience the next thing. Right? If they step into that, they're good. Because it's not about resources, it's about resourcefulness. So fit's not an issue. 
Authority, they have to own it. It's about support, not permission. We all here? Yeah. Do you feel like we've peeled the layers back on your prospects? Yeah. And they're just laid bare naked there? Just <laughs> You've solicited the sale. Now you got to close, all right? Avoidance. So now they're like, wait, wait, what do you think about it? <laughs> so now that we've exhausted, I'm putting this as emphasis, we've exhausted all outside reasons. Now we're finally talking to someone in power. And that is what a good coach does. We don't make decisions for people. We help them make decisions. So here's an I have to think about it. Not sure. Give me a hand. Who's dealt with somebody who just thinks that way? All right. At least one person here. No, I'm kidding. All you guys did. You guys are great. So this is how I divide this up. Past, present, future. And so hopefully this should already, before I dive into these, give you simple frameworks to work through. Time, you've got macro, micro, when, then. Right? You've got, you got value. You're thinking about, it's not a lot of money. Even if it were a lot of money, it's not a lot of money. You're going to pay for it either way. Like you have the simple frameworks that you can walk through. You might just hit them with one, and if they hit it with again, you hit them with the other angle. Because they're logical frameworks. They're not scripts. That's why I made them bubbles. You don't have to memorize it. You've got to understand it. Past. So like, I need to think about it. And so the thing is, is and this, the first bubble there is if someone's like, I feel like this is happening so fast. Anyone get that one? Like, I just, I just got on the phone with you. I don't really know who you are. And you're like, hey, this is not a fast decision, right? You've been making the decision for the last six years. You continually make the decision. All we're doing today is deciding you're actually going to do something about it, right? How long you wanted to lose weight? A long time. So this is not a fast decision at all. But the thing is, is that, and this is where you go sunk cost. So if I were talking to you guys, I would say, you, find, you know, you bought tickets because you saw some ad. You registered there. You got your flights. You got a hotel. You blocked the time. You flew here. You listened to this whole thing. You're six inches from gold. This isn't a fast decision at all. You did all these things to get here because it's important to you. So don't let that distortion stop you from getting what you want. Right? It's fear. Right? Let's face that. What are you afraid of having happen? Which, by the way, I took the slide out, but my two favorite questions to ask in a, in a sale that I feel like are the fastest to cut through is what are you most afraid of having happen if you buy? What are you most afraid of? What's the worst thing that you envision in your mind? And if they're not sure, I just fill in the blanks. I'm like, I take your credit card, I swipe over as much as I possibly can, I go to Vegas, I put it all on black, and then I go to Monaco where they can't extradite me. Fair enough? And they're like, I was not thinking that. And you're like, right. So what's the worst, you know, like, what's, what's the real thing? They're like, and they're like, you know, I just have bought so many programs before. And you're like, right, let's talk about that, right? And so I'm going to skip one forward, and then I'm going to go back to it. This is one of my favorite obstacle or objection overcomes. It's, I call it, don't let it burn you twice. And this literally, you can see the date. It happened yesterday. This girl texted me, or, or mess, April 6th. She said, it's crazy to think that I had a sales call with you six years ago, and I'm kicking myself in the butt for not jumping on. This is yesterday, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even own the company anymore. And I said, you let a bad decision burn you twice. Once when you made your poor investment, but a second time when you let that bad investment stop you from a good investment. It would be like, anybody ever have a boyfriend or girlfriend in middle school or high school that they're not currently married to? <laughs> Anyone? Just like, just come on. Yeah. Help me out here. OK. It would be like having a bad eighth grade boyfriend or girlfriend and being like, you know what? Men aren't for me. <laughs> All coaches suck, right? There's good coaches, there's bad coaches. There's crazy ass bitches and there's crazy ass dudes. You know what I mean? Like, there's also good ones. And so the thing is, if you stop, if you let the bad one prevent you from the good one, you get burned by being with the bad one and because you let the bad one control your next decision, right? And so when someone has had a bad experience with doing keto or whatever the fuck, right? or you had a bad experience with some program that you did or did not do, or they didn't fulfill, whatever. Either way, don't let that burn you twice, because no matter what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to do these actions, whether you're part of the program or not. You've got to do these workouts, whether you're part of the program or not. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to do it. So you might as well do it, but somebody's going to get you there faster, right? Let me go back one real quick. So it's not a fast decision, and this is another one that I love, which is, do you think that you're maybe in this position because you have struggled to make a decision in the past? You have waffled when it came time to make, to make the hard call? Have you been in this conversation and said no before? Yeah. Do you think that's why you're here? Yeah. Do you think that might be the reason you should change that? Yeah. Okay, let's change it. One decision, change your life. And the last one is like, are you tired of another year of almost? Right? Tired another year of almost hitting your goals, of almost getting to 10K a month, of, of almost 
you know, hiring the team that you wanted, of almost retiring your, your wife or husband, or almost moving into the neighborhood that you wanted to move into, or almost being able to pay for your kids' recreational sports rather than not being able to because you can't afford it. Or you're tired of another year of almost. Well, if you're tired of another year almost, then we can't do what we're doing to get here for another year because we're going to get another year almost. And so the question isn't what it costs you, but how much has it cost you to not decide up to this point, right? The cost of inaction. And I think that when we think about our lives in reverse, we never regret the things that we did, we regret the things we didn't do. The opportunities that we let pass by. And I think that if you can let that person step into that power, they will make the decision to help themselves, like this person did not. All right, present. So, depends on who you're talking to. If someone's talking about past stuff, then you deal with the past stuff. The second frame for avoidance is present, which is they just don't know how to make a fucking decision, right? And so you have to help them make a decision. And so this one, the rocking chair, is one that I just, for some reason, have used a tremendous amount of time, especially when I was selling weight loss, is to be like, I just really, really need to think about it. Be like, totally understand. Well, let's walk through like what that looks like. You're not gonna like go home, sit in the rocking chair, you know, smoke a cigarette because of course you're not healthy yet, right? You'll quit when you're healthy, right? <laughs> you're smoking your cigarette and you're like, hmm, am I gonna do this weight loss program, right? You just sit there and just stare into the clouds like, I wonder. No, of course not. You can get in your car and then you're gonna realize you gotta pick up Timmy from soccer practice, you gotta get groceries, you gotta cook, you gotta clean, you gotta pick up, you know, go do the laundry, you gotta do all these things, right? And then three, four, five days from now, you're gonna put on that old pair of jeans and it's not gonna fit and you'll be like, fuck. And just there, You'll have made the decision, and you'll keep living your life. And so let's just make it now. Because the reality is that it doesn't take information to make decisions, sorry, it doesn't take time to make decisions, it takes information. And I'm the only source of information you got. So let's talk, I'm here, I'm here for you, let's do it, right? Because that's the fallacy, is that people think they need more time to make decisions because they assume they will get more information in that time. But if you are the source of the information, then time does not help them. And so let's confront it now, and let me answer the questions you have to make the decision, one way or another. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And so then they're like, well, then fuck, how do I make a decision? You're like, glad you asked. So there's three things that we got to understand. Do you believe that this product or service is going to help you achieve what you want? Yes or no? They're going to say yes, right? And if they don't, you can confront it. Note, all of these are confronting decisions. So we've moved all the way down the onion, right? We're at truth now. And all, like the theme of the, of the last bullet is confrontation. We have to confront the decision. We gotta peel it back and be like, are we gonna do this or not? Right, because we already got out the time, we got out the fit, we got out the, we got everything out of the way, it's just you. Do you think that this is gonna help you get closer to your goals? Yes or no? Two, do you trust me to, fill, to fulfill my word? That I said I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna do these calls, I'm gonna do these workouts, I'm gonna do whatever, right? Three, this is the mo probably the most important one. Do you think it'll work for you? And if they say no, you say, why not? And then they have to defend why not. And then it's very easy. At that point, it's a six-inch putt, right? And once they say yes to all three, which is usually what will happen, they're like, cool, we'll make the decision together. Do you know how to make the decision? They'll say no. You go through the three. And the last question is, they said yes, yes, yes. It's just, do you have or have access to the amount of money to get started? Do you have the Amex? Do you want me to help you enroll in an Amex? Because I want to I wanna help you. I'm good either way. But if you believe that this is gonna help you get closer, you believe that what I'm saying is true, and you believe that you can be successful, then it's my moral obligation to get you going and do everything in my power to help you get the money or get access to it. Because the real world is if I was giving you a Ferrari right now for $5,000, you'd find the money. If your landlord needed you to come up with $10,000 because you had background in payroll, you'd find the money. So find the money, let's do it, right? Three, who wants to make informed decisions? Yes? How can you make an informed decision if you haven't even tried it? Huh? So this is when you have some element of trial in the program or some sort of guarantee, which is why I'm a big fan of guarantees. It's like, well, you can't make the decision to buy that's informed until you're on the inside. So I'm not even asking you to make a decision right now. I'm just asking you to make an informed decision, which you can only do on the inside. And if after 30 days, I'm not what I said, this product doesn't do what I told you, I didn't fulfill my promise and you don't think it's gonna work for you, you let me know, I'll give you the money back. Low pressure. You get someone to decide by not deciding. Even easier. Does that make sense? Yeah. Think that'll help you close? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then uh, this one is, uh, it depends on who you're selling to, but sometimes if you have a logical person, it's like, do you know what deciding even means? Like where the etymology of the word comes from? It's de cadere, which is Latin, which means to cut off, to kill off. And so the question is, which future are we killing off today? 
Are we killing off the future of the dreams that you want? Are we killing off the future? Sorry. Are we killing off the future of, of not doing anything and the life that you've lived up to this point? Because indecision is a decision. Inaction is an active decision, right? And so it's just, which one are we killing today? Are we killing your dreams or are we killing your past? Second to last one, future. So we talked about past. So if they're thinking about the past, the things that hurt them, don't let it burn you twice, et cetera, right? They don't know how to make a decision. Rocking chair, this is how you make a decision. Three things, you have access to money. Great, let's get going. You want to kill your past, you want to kill your future, right? Awesome. When we're talking about the future. This is actually magnifying pain, which is, cool, you got here. It's been five years you've been struggling. How's another five years sound? What if we just keep doing? Let's go with indecision. Let's look at it. What does five years of you doing what you've been doing look like? And is that a place you want to be? No? You got to change the change. Let's do it, right? And then you go right into let's consider the options, which is like, like this is logic, right? So let's consider the options. Option one, you do the thing, you get the result, life is awesome. Option two, you don't do the thing, you don't get the result because you didn't do the thing. Option three, you do the thing, but then you don't get the result. All these are the options that can happen in front of you. Because we have a guarantee, they're all risk-free, except for one of them. Only one of them has a true guarantee of not getting you where you want, which is walking out the door. So which risk-free option do you want? The one that's risk-free, that guarantees that you're not gonna get there, or the one that's risk-free and has the potential to get you where you wanna go? Right? That's not an emotional close, it's logic. And if you have an offer that's set up that way, you should be able to close most people as long as they don't think you're an asshole, right? Okay. This is one that's more around urgency, because again, this is avoidance. If someone says, I, I'm still not sure, I wanna think about it more, or whatever, you say, well, you're not gonna struggle forever, right? Like, you don't wanna struggle forever. You're gonna do something about this, whether it's weight loss, business, whatever. They're gonna say yes. You're like, well, if you're gonna fix your business eventually, you might as well start fixing it now so you can start enjoying the fruits of that labor sooner. Would you prefer making more money faster or slower? What's your preference? Great, so if you're gonna do it eventually, you might as well do it now. Does that make sense? It's a little nudge. This is a final one that I just really like from a framing perspective, which is, instead of a like, this has to be my savior, this program has to get me to an IFBB Pro bikini body and I'm 100 pounds overweight, probably not realistic, right? Reframe the question is, do you think that making the decision is gonna be, help you get closer or further from your goal? That's it. Because if we keep making decisions that keep getting us closer, we will get there eventually. But if we make decisions that get us further away, we will not get there. And so do you think that this is gonna get you closer to your goal than what you're currently doing? Yes. What are we waiting for? We don't need to be snipers, we need to be directionally right. If we do that long enough, we'll get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. That helps you too because we have this fear of perfectionism. Is this gonna be the one? Probably not but it will get you fucking way closer, right? So I can tell you, there's no one program that changed my life, but the, the decision to buy education changed my life forever. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Boom. And so let me, let me look at the top. We have no reasons left not to own the power that you have. It's just you, all right? And here's bonus number six, and you can use this as one of, like, there's some closes that you use all the time you always go back to, right? The reason you are telling yourself not to do this is the reason you need to do it. How long do you want I can't afford this to be on your list of problems in life? The fact that you don't have time is the very reason you need to do this. The fact that you're so dependent on your spouse is the reason you need to take this decision and own it, right? The fact that you're not sure about the person that you wanna be is the very reason that we're gonna help you get it in this program. So whatever the reason is, is usually the biggest chain that you're holding onto, is the thing that you're enslaving yourself to, is the thing that you're casting your power to. If you break that chain, power comes back to you. And so the very reason that you're holding yourself back is typically the very reason that you need to do it. So hopefully, this helps you realize that you and your clients are always in complete power. Did I accomplish that? Awesome. Thank you. And like I promised at the beginning, my hope is that you become more powerful by making decisions rather than letting life make them for you. All right, so here's a few final thoughts. Fortunes are created by taking a lot of risk with a little bit of money. Fortunes are maintained by taking a little bit of risk with a lot of money. And every one of those people that was self-made takes a lot of risk with a little bit of money. 
And sometimes you need to take that step because it's the only way to build the fortune, all right? And if everything that I've ever made in my life, or sorry, everything that I've made in my life is a result of investing in my own education. It has gotten me far higher returns than any stock, any real estate, any crypto, right? Any whatever, by a mile. And people say like, it's all about investing in yourself. Like, I just, I think it sounds amorphous. It's like, buy experience and skills. Because no government can take that from you. No divorce can take that from you. Nothing can take that from you. And I come from a family where, so we're, we're Persian, and so my, my parents had to flee Iran during the revolution. And so they had land and houses and other stuff, right? And my uncle was uh, the brother to a guy who started the lottery in Iran. He owned the lottery, because you can do that there, right? <laughs> Very rich. And so my dad and him, he went to London, my dad went to the US. He had no skills. And he was able to just forge enough money to buy a print shop, and he lives above the print shop in London. And still to this day, he, that's what he does. And I went to visit him. It was incredibly sad, seeing just like, what well, once, once a incre and his wife, my dad gave her a scarf, and it was like a nice scarf, apparently. And she just bawled. She's like, I used to have rooms of these, and now I have nothing, and blah, 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 right? My dad came to the United States with $1,000. But because he had skills, he built it all from scratch. And so, I mean, he was a doctor as all Middle Eastern and Indians are, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> Doctor, lawyer, accountant, engineer. Anyways, uh, the only four approved paths. But when we say invest in that, we come from a place where like, it was literally all taken. The government was like, that's our house now. That's our land now. That bank account is our bank account now. And so that was why it was so, and like, that might be a benefit for me. I had somebody who was always like, it's the only thing no one can take from you. And so why would you not invest in the one thing that can never be stolen, can never be taken, and compounds with time? And it increases your capacity to make money, increases your capacity to live. And so I like to think of the investments that I've made in myself as bricks on a bridge. And so if I'm on the bottom left here, and where I want to be is the top right-ish, right? Looking like the nightmare before Christmas now. Uh, <laughs> you're going, like, there are many skills that it takes to cross the bridge. Right? And just like you have an arithmetic teacher in high school, once you learn calculus, you're not like, that guy was a load of shit. Calculus is what, no, you have to learn things in sequence, right? And so the thing is, is that when you build this bridge, it's one brick at a time. And I always come back to the same question, which is, is this going to get me closer to where I want to go? I don't need it to get me there. I just need to get closer. And if I get better, I'll get there eventually, right? As long as I don't stop moving. And so that's why, that's what I've dedicated my life to education. My mission is to document and share the best practices of building world-class companies. Because when you realize that you are the source, you realize that Superman is not coming. It's just you. And every decision that you make is a vote towards or against the person that we want to be. And so the question for you is that are your decisions voting towards the person that you want to become or just more of what you already have? And so people ask me all the time, how do you move so quickly? And the answer is I know how to buy time. And the follow-up question is, how do you buy time? You buy time by buying the time it took other people to make mistakes that taught them the lessons. That's how you do it, right? That's, that's the heck. And so right now, the ignorance of not knowing how to create a million dollars a year is costing you a million dollars a year. The fact that you don't know how to make a million dollars a year is costing you a million dollars a year. Think about it, right? And so therefore, you should always be willing to invest money to increase the capacity for your income. Because once you have it, that capacity pays you forever. You're increasing your ability. Does that make sense? We're widening the pipe. And so when I thought about this, I just added zeros to it, and I was like, it's fucking costing me a billion dollars a year not knowing how to make a billion dollars. Like, God, <laughs> right? But it's true because the thing, the number one tax that no one appreciates or no one respects is not the tax of the government, it's not capital gains, it's not income tax, it's the time tax of ignorance. Someone asked Layla yesterday, What's the number one thing that people from zero to 10K are messing up? You don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's what's messing you up. You're ignorant, you have no idea. You're eating an orange like an apple, no clue, right? <laughs> and it's not because you don't have the processing power, it's not because you don't have the ability to reason, it's because you just don't know. And so the goal is to pay down 
the time tax of ignorance as fast as humanly possible. And the only way you do that is by educating and investing yourself, right? S specifically, investing in experiences that build skills. So make the decisions that, to help yourself, implement like crazy, take ownership because we just discovered that all the other shit is not real, it is literally a distortion of reality, that anything that you give your power to that's not you is fake. You're making it a false god in your life, and your prospects are too. And you, now you know how to confront those when your mind tries to play tricks on you. And realize that there are no silver bullets. No program is gonna save your life, all right? But some things can move you close to your goals, and when those rare opportunities present themselves, take them, all right? Because either you win or you learn, and both of those get you closer to wherever you wanna go, all right? And so, I'll wrap up with this. 10 years ago, I had to, that was me in a swanky, uh, you know, when I was a consultant, looking cool. It was actually after, I don't even have a good picture when I was a consultant, but there's me in a suit. Um, <laughs> and I, I knew I hated the job that I had. Um, I made okay money, but I just like, I just really wasn't happy. Um, and I emailed 40 gym owners and I was like, hey, I think I wanna get in fitness. Can somebody like help me out? One guy was like, sure, you can work for free. I was like, awesome. Uh, and that guy was Sam Bakhtiar. And anybody know who Sam Bakhtiar is? Raise hand. Jeez, okay. Well, Seven Figure Sam uh, is what he used to be known as. He actually died during COVID, um, which is really sad for me because I really looked up to Sam. And the thing is, is that when I got to his office, I literally drove across the country from Baltimore to LA, or Chino Hills, which is where he was. And I showed up without notice, and he was like, you're a psychopath, I just met you on the internet. And I was like, I'm here, I'm ready to learn. He was like, I'm going to lunch. <laughs> and, um, but right after he came back from lunch, uh, he was like, all right, so you should join my, my mastermind. And I was like, I don't have a gym. And he's like, that's okay. <laughs> it was a gym mastermind. Um, and I didn't, I mean, like, I was 22. Like, I did not have a lot of money. Um, and he was like, well, it's 10 grand. And I was like, I, I don't know. And he's like, you need to fucking commit, man. And he's like, you've been waffling back and forth. I had had multiple phone calls with him before I left. Um, he's like, I think you need to draw a line in the sand. And thank, you God, you know, thank God he did. Because I did take a step over. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. But I was trying to start paying down the time tax of ignorance. And I got around a whole bunch of other fitness professionals. And I learned way more from all of them than I ever learned from Sam. <laughs> But because of that, my beliefs started to change, the ways I saw the world change, the traits I started to embody changed, and started taking steps. The mastermind I got from Sam is not what made me $100 million, but it got me on the right path towards making it. And so if you can make those choices, I think it's these small steps, not believing that it's gonna be a savior, but believing that it's aligned with the, where you want to go, and believing in yourself that if you keep walking on this path, you'll get there. So thank you guys so much, appreciate it.